can't believe this. Good morning, how my beautiful queens and house of kings doing this morning? How you doing? Welcome or welcome back to another day in a new video. This would really be like a chit chat story time video. Um, sit down. I wanted to share with you all in the previous vlog that I just recently uploaded today. I had mentioned that there was uh, this would be like a life update for me. I had wanted to share something that happened um, this past week for me. I um, ended up receiving a letter in the mail that really shocked me. So with that being said, getting right into the video. And I'm going to just say disclaimer. I wanted to, I would like to put out a disclaimer. I, I'm going to be covering some scenarios or slash different topics on how I feel that could be relatable to the subject that I'm about to speak on. And with that being said, so if you all new here, I know I have gained a few new subscribers and some of you all have been following me for quite some time. So you all know that um, I have went through, I have resigned from a job prior to the job that I just recently started at. So I was working for this particular company for over a year and a half. I was working as a, in the food and beverage department. So pretty much I'm doing the same thing that I did at this previous job. And so you all that have been following me for quite some time know that I had resigned from my position and I was out of work for like maybe, I would say maybe a month and a half. And then I was taking you all on the journey, which I had called this series. I had started a series on my China called Being Delivered Diaries because I felt like it was much needed because God had removed and delivered me from that place for a reason. And so I was wondering, because I think I was mentioning to you all in through vlogs back that it was kind of hard for me to find a job until this position finally landed for me. I had submitted like 51 applications in on the deed. And far as like uh, the next steps towards getting getting hired was I had I had got I, I had got like interview like I had two interviews. One of them was an in-person interview and the other one was like a virtual interview, but that job that was online, I just felt like it wasn't a legit job. So I never reached back out to that particular employer because if you all know that I was really trying to seek employment where I wanted to work from home because at the time it was a lot of things that was going on in my personal life and trying to, you know, balance personal life as well as being a mom I had thought that working from home would be a better option for me but God had other plans and he wanted me to still be you know working in public for a reason and so with that being said I received a letter uh, two days well like well, a day ago yeah probably two days ago in the mail and this letter was showing and I'm not gonna show my address or nothing like that for privacy reasons I'm gonna just kind of fold this up so I received a letter in the mail showing that, uh, what does it say, this disbursement, uh, um, dispute, and I received for one cent. Now I'm trying to figure out, you out what I'm going to do with a penny. I can't cash a penny in. I mean, uh, you, you can't even cash one cent in. Why would you all even send me a letter saying one cent? And then on top of that, because I, I don't want to, you know, I want to reveal too much of my privacy on here because my address is on here. I want to protect my privacy. In this letter, it says um, reason for this disbursement was termination. Now, I'm, I'm going to go more deep into this. I was never terminated from my position at this particular employer, this company. I resigned. And I think what made them slap this on my background because they got mad because they begged me to stay twice. The first time when I was about to resign on them, I spoke with the GM and you know she didn't want to see me go, so I tried to hold on and hang in there a little much longer. But when I saw that things was getting worse and worse and it was bothering to the point where it was taking a toll on me mentally, my mental health, and I went to HR prior to be, me, me uh, let me take my time. I went to my, at that time, the HR manager that was employed at this particular company, I went to her and told her that I had needed to take some time all to myself to protect my mental health because it was so much going on. Like at that time, they was constantly booking so many events and there was only two of us running around and the work, oh, you know, I feel like we was being overloaded with work and it was just getting to the point where I couldn't handle it too much no more. So I had to take like maybe two weeks off from work just to protect my mental health. 
because mental health is so important. And and when I say, how can you show up for others when you're not in your best state of mind? I'm gonna say it like that. And so with that being said, like I never, I never was terminated from a job. Like I never been terminated from any job. Any job that I ever had begged me to stay. I mean, literally begged me to stay. And I'm not saying that to be, make it seem like I'm just this and that. It just because the, the type of person I am when I'm working, I go over and beyond for my position. Like I do some things that other people probably wouldn't do. Like detail work, some that, you know, other employers might not feel like it's part of their work description. But yet still, I would go over and beyond for my position and I would still be underpaid. And I had to think about it and I said two, I had to put two and two together. I said maybe there was a reason why it took so long for employers to reach back out to me because of what this letter had said that I was terminated from my position when I was never terminated. Like I literally still have my email right today showing that I sent the email to HR letting them know that I was resigning. Resigning and termination is totally two different things. And the average person wouldn't even probably wrote a resignation letter, let alone email a resignation letter to the employer letting them know that this was going to be their last day of work. I have seen people they used to work with me in past, walk off on jobs. I have seen people um, just quit a job without even giving a, a, a notice, you know, to their employers. But yet still me taking the steps, being the woman that I am, because I was told to always do, thing and do things in a righteous way, look what happened. They slapped this, now this, I feel like this is on my record. And what I'm gonna do tomorrow, because I tried to call, this morning a number, but somehow it's leading me to so many different steps. I was gonna contact this this number and let them know, well, I probably have to do it when I get off of work, but I'm now gonna reach out and let these people know that I was never terminated from my position. And I'm gonna go de in detail, letting them know that I was being overworked, underpaid, and it, and it was a lot of things that was going on, which caused me to resign. I'm, a, I'm gonna have to correct this because I don't want this on my background. You know, I was mentioning something, I was telling my, um, I was mentioning to one of my um, close friends about this and this person was like well you know I wouldn't let it bother me because you you had a job now but still it's on my background this is on my background you see what I'm saying like if I had wanted to take a second part-time position somewhere else they looking at I was terminated from this particular company why should I hire you you know and it's just really sad because one thing I'm learning you all every day and I say this when God has called you on to a higher level, some people don't want to see you grow and prosper. I'm going to just say it like that. Some people don't want to see you win in life. And I feel like it's, it's like being in a toxic relationship where if you're in a toxic relationship with a man and a woman and they try to bring evil to you, telling you that if I can't have you, no one will. And if somebody tell you that, that means that they don't want the best for you. And I had to think about that because my thing is, why do I stay in a situation where I'm unhappy? With me, joy is very important. I, I have to find peace and happiness in whatever I do. I'm not going to stay in the situation just to make somebody else happy when I'm miserable just because they don't want to see me go or they don't want to see me grow. No. And the reason why I'm saying this is because when you on a mission for, for, for greater things to happen, the enemy going to always find some type of way to kill, steal, and destroy. He don't want to see you grow. And what people don't realize, the devil was once an angel. I'm going to just say it like that. I had learned this a couple years ago, probably when I was going to in-person Bible study way before the pandemic happened. I used to be an in-person Bible study at my former church. And the pastor preached this. The devil was once an angel, but he got kicked out of heaven for being disobedient, betraying God. So why, you know, so with that being said, he he don't want to see, people don't, some people don't want to see you grow. Now, if, 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 if long as you doing things to make them happy and satisfied, it can be business-wise or in a relationship, they are, it's all goody goody. Uh, they all, they satisfied with that. But the time when you decide that enough is enough and you ready to move on, they find some type of way to get back at you. 
And I had to think about it. I'm like, you know, I was talking to my family about it. I'm like, this never happened to me. Long as I've been working, I never had, like, usually when I applied for jobs, jobs would reach out to me. Like, don't get me wrong, companies was reaching back out to me, but the hiring process took a long time, and I was wondering why it took a long time. And then when this letter came to my house two days ago, and I read it, and I thought about it, I'm like, this this could be the reason why. Because most times when you... Uh, one thing I tell people, too, your social security number, it follows you everywhere. Like, when the job trying to do some research or find out a little background history to, a little background history from you, they're going to automatically go to your social security number. So they can pretty much tell what kind of employment you had, like, what kind of jobs you worked in the past. Like, you know, they can, they can pull all that up. Because when I was thinking about it, like I had mentioned to you all in a previous video, it was like one of the series, in my series, about um, I was wondering why like the employer, like I kept trying to reach back out to this employer, like I had got hired and the interview went so fast at the time and it made me wonder, like I never had got interviewed within 20 minutes, you know. And the lady kept saying, well, you know, we're, I'll reach back out to you, I would like for you to be my general manager. I kept contacting because I was always taught, you know, after two, three weeks, reach back out to the employer to let them know you want the job. I did that. I did everything I was supposed to do that I was taught. But every time I would contact the lady back and see what was the next steps, I never can reach reach out to her. Front desk, I always answer the phone. They would leave, you know, they would send me to her voice message. She never reached back out. And then when I had to think about it, this particular reason from this letter is the reason why she didn't reach out. Because these folks had set up here and lied and said that I was terminated when literally I resigned because I got tired of being taken advantage of on the job. That's one thing I'm learning every day now is I'm going to do what I can. Like I say, I, I, I don't expect for, for these employers to be loyal to me no more. Like I say, loyalty is rare. These people don't care nothing about you. long as you coming in and helping their business build and making money, they it, it's all good. One thing I'm learning now since that happened to me, I'm going to do what I can. I'm going to come in. I'm going to perform my duties on, on you know, job. Finish my job description up. When I get off, go home, and that's it. All that going over and beyond, doing extra stuff, volunteering, doing all that. No, I'm not doing it no more. And the part that really hurts me is because when this this place, this this form company I'm talking about, when they were so short staffed because they couldn't keep people a, as it is. Anytime a place had revolving doors, and I'm gonna go in detail with revolving doors mean, that means somebody won't stay long. Like people come and go. Anytime when a, a company has revolving doors, when meaning that people come and go, that means they're going to have a high turnover rate. And then the thing is, I will, I will go over and beyond at this place. Like when they were short staffing laundry, y'all know I used to tell y'all I used to work laundry a lot. They were very short staffing Starbucks. I had worked Starbucks two weeks for them. Now, now then you know, I wasn't hired for these two de departments. I was hired to be a banquet server there. But sometimes when we didn't have many banquet, um, which most times when I wasn't scheduled to work that many banquet events, they, you know, they would let me work other departments because they knew how good of a worker I was, which I appreciated that because I could have used the extra hours on my check because at that time, that was just my main source of income. I didn't have a second job lined up, so I didn't mind volunteering and come in and helping other departments. But then when I received this letter, I'm like, this would, this would, this had to go. This how, this how y'all do a good lawyer person. They just let me know loyalty is rare. You can't, you can't, you can't go over and beyond no more for these people. When I say the economy has changed some of these people mindsets in these jobs, some people have these high positions where they think they more than you and, and, and think that they can get, you know, just do anything to you and they feel like that you supposed to just take their crap. No. I, I refuse to be used. I refuse to be in a situation knowing that it's making me miserable. No. I like to be happy. I like to smile. Because... It okay, with that being said, you all, and I'm going to kind of wrap it up a little bit. I ain't going to make this vlog, this video too long. But yeah, I feel like when you come to work, work should be like your safe space besides what you know what you have going on outside of work with your personal life. That should be a place where you can be able to have comfort, 
like where you can feel comfortable, um, yeah, you know, where you can feel comfortable at without distractions. I'm gonna say it like that. But in some cases, that's not always the this, that won't always happen, which I'm seeing it now. But to make a long story short, you have to do what's best for you in life. You have to do what's best for you in life. Never let nobody make you feel guilty for doing what's best for your life. Never stay in the situation just to make somebody else feel good because I'm telling you, it will take all the energy out of you. And when I say mental health is so important, I, I stand by mental health because there's a lot of people who walk around carrying a smile every single day and can, be, and can be going through it all, going through so much that a person would never know because they keep that they keep their smile. And that's how it was for me. When I would come to work every day, I'm, Hey, how you doing, so-and-so? Good morning, how you doing? Knowing that I didn't even really want to be here at this particular place, but I knew I had to provide for myself as well as my child. I mean, it just was getting to the point where the job was just sucking the energy out of me. Like, I just didn't want to be there. Because, for one, I felt undervalued at this place. That's one reason why I left. When I mean undervalued, they didn't appreciate the, the food and beverage department. Like when I mean by we were, me and my friend at the time, we had to serve 200 some people a day. Like they had event for 280, plus they would turn around and book another event that same day. Me and her had to rush and get stuff together, like last minute things. Not inform them us a day, day before, we had to rush and do things, we already tired. Reworking Al was like a nurse, but being underpaid. Now you know that's that's not good. And then you want they wonder why they can't keep workers. I mean, I would be at the job so much, it almost made me wanted to just bring a blanket in the pillow home. I mean a blanket in the pillow with me because I would be there more sometimes and I'd be at my own house. And that's sad, you know. And then the thing the part that gets me is when some people hide about, oh, suck it up make that money no i'm not gonna suck nothing up if, if you feel like you want to settle for this that's you but you're not going to encourage me to settle because i like joy i'm sorry when i come in and walk into a room a place I, I like happiness i don't like to be around evil people or evil spirits and that's what was really you know coming to, that was really what was destroying my peace there because i would have to be around some people that just was very toxic but I had to deal with them because they was my coworkers, you know. But at the end of the day, God had better plans. Even though the process took long for something else to come through, I don't have to work as hard like I did there. Even though I'm doing the same thing that I did there, I'm still in the food and beverage department, I don't have to work as hard. I have a, a, a supervisor who, who's very sweet, who makes sure I'm good at all times. He's not over. He's not standing over my shoulder every five, ten minutes to see what I'm doing. I don't have to deal with that kind of that environment no more. And it's just sad when you're trying to grow and you want to do better in life. Something I always try to come and 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 get you distracted. And the way how I'm feeling now, b between now and the rest of this year over with, I'm trying to eliminate all distractions that come my way. It's like the way how, the way my mindset is now is that when some come my way, the way how I, 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 like I, I refuse to let the enemy steal my joy. Before I feel like he tried to come in my head, I'm going to slap him with a scripture. That's how I feel. Psalms 23, Psalms 91. You're not going you're not going to interrupt her peace no more. You're not going to make me feel guilty for doing what's best for me. Because at the end of the day, I'm a child of the most high God who got me, who's going to protect me, who's going to make sure I'm good at all times. And so my advice for you all, whatever it is that come your way, don't let the enemy win. Always do what makes you happy. Do what's best for you. Regardless of what people say, because people gonna always talk. I had to think about that. I used to always worry about what this person gonna think or say. It's not what people think of you, as my great grandmother always say. It's what you think of yourself. Because these people ain't gotta, they ain't gotta live. They don't have to live with you. They don't have to deal with the choices you choose for your life. And that's the problem now because people being taught that they should do this and do that in order to um, survive but at the end of the day in some situations it's not always the best 
I refuse to be used just to make somebody else happy. I refuse to have something just interrupt my peace. No. And so I'm going to leave this off with you all is to do what makes you happy. If you're in a toxic relationship that, you know, I can't really speak on and tell you, you know, I, I, I know with me, if something, if, if I'm in a toxic relationship, I'm not in a relationship now, but I have done, I have dealt with a toxic relationship. And when I found how this person was, I left him alone. I'm not going to stay with somebody to make them happy. And I'm, I'm miserable. No, mm -mm. no. You get 24 hours in a day. And every day when I wake up, I thank the Lord for blessing me to wake up and see another day. So it's up to me to make the best out of that 24 hours a day. And with that being said, I'm going to find the littlest things to make myself happy and appreciate, you know, the life he's given me. And you have to make the best out of it. No job is worth your mental health. No tox relationship is worth you selling. Don't sell it for nothing. When you design, when you when when God has this, this destined to, for greatness over your life, you gotta do what's what He say. I'ma say it like that. You have to be the best version of yourself. You can't show up for other people when they can care less about you, which I'm seeing that now. So what for what I'ma end this off with? Do not let people steal your joy and get the best of you, and do what makes you happy.